I am in like my fantasy of all fantasy places. I'm in the middle of the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum and I'm wearing my spacesuit. Now, I'm not just doing this because it's super fun, even though it is. I'm doing it because the museum is the brand new home of the Ur spacesuit, the OG spacesuit, the one that is the reason I got into space and it's what I think of when I think of astronauts and it's why I own and keep modifying and improving this beautiful Ryan Nagata suit. Yes, Neil Armstrong's original Apollo 11 suit was revealed yesterday after years of restoration and it has a new home here in the Smithsonian and I'm about to go see it and I wasn't gonna do that without dressing up. Look at that. It's so beautiful. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so moving. Now, I'm gonna get out of this outfit because I'm in Washington DC in the middle of the summer and I'm about to have heat stroke. But once I get out, I'm gonna get to talk to Lisa Young who spent several years restoring this suit. Lisa, <laughs> what an unbelievable achievement. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's been a long time. We've been working on this suit for like decades. <laughs> Here it is, finally. It, it's so beautiful, the pose, it must have been intoxicating to work on this. Yeah, it, it's a little, um, we weren't sure how to pose it. I mean, yeah. I, I'm glad you mentioned that first because we wanted to give a little bit more life into right, it. Right, right. Because, you know, costumes in museums are very static. Yeah. And, you know, especially military costumes, they're always on some straight board mannequin yes. or whatever. And we really tossed that up for a long time about how we could give it a little bit of life. And, yeah and make it feel like he's back in his suit. Like recreate that moment of Neil Armstrong wearing his space suit. It, well, it feels like there's a person in there. What needed to be restored? Can you start me as to like what was deteriorating and, and what was sure, happening in sure. the beginning? So we use the word conservation, not restoration. Thank you. But it's just because we're not trying to make it look new. We're right. not recreating 1969. Um, what's happened to the suit has happened to the suit. It's naturally aged over time. Sure. The first thing you'll notice is the lunar dust yes. on the knees. Well, I hope everybody notices that first. It is so sharp and angular that it just gets inside the fiber. And we're talking about regolith, right? Little tiny pieces right. of glass and silica right. that are like, that silica are not eroded, titanium. so they have exactly. tiny edges that are grabbing. Exactly, they grip on and just stick there. And so you really- tear apart the fabric as it moves? Right. So. Okay. Yeah, you have to, movement is really hard with the spacesuits because they're awkward. So for a long time, people didn't know how to even move them in our own museum. Oh, wow. You know, we'd pick them up underneath the leg or something. And um, now we are much more careful about handling them. We know that we can disturb those layers. The other conservation challenge is the pressure bladder inside the rubber. It's a natural rubber? It's a natural synthetic blend. Okay. Which does not play well together or <laughs> age well. It with was, time. Right, yeah. it was only meant to last six months. So you, knowing that, it's really hard. Right. Um, it has done its sort of thing in the deterioration sense where it's hardened, it's a little bit brittle, um, right. but it does continue to off-gas these really unwanted vapors that are right. getting into the suit materials. So how do you, given that that's one of 21 layers, how right. do you begin to, to deal with such so, a thing? So um, we did imagery to look inside. We did CAT scanning and X-radiography things and looked at the deformation of the rubber pieces, uh, what parts look like they were frozen versus still flexible. Um, and all of that is incorporated into our mannequin structure, which had to be exactly right to hold the, the interior oh. components sort of where they were, like push on them out, but not push too hard, not let them collapse in. Oh my God, what an engineering challenge. That never even <laughs> occurred to me. So you're, the mannequin is built to accommodate both the, the still flexible and maybe unflexible right. parts of the interior layers to all to keep it from continuing to age. Right. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> So the hard part about that is, as you know, from putting on your own spacesuit, we had to build a mannequin inside. Yeah, it's really and we've hard always to get done it that way. 
<laughs> so you have to open up the back and it's kind of like doing surgery. You know, you're putting the leg in, you're putting the arm <laughs> in. And uh, so our mannequin um, uses a new um, lightweight aluminum structure. Okay. Um, we started with Neil Armstrong's measurements. Right. Knowing that the suit had shrunk a little bit, but we started there. Um, we entered them into a CAD program on the computer. Right. And uh, we sort of built the mannequin from that. Uh, we used a central section of a skeleton with fittings that we 3D printed. Oh, um, so we can actually adjust the arms rotation, the leg, oh. the hip where we want it, and then lock them into place mm -hmm. um, without any tools inside because right. we needed something that would you know rotate and catch. And we have pictures of all these little pieces we can show you. Um, and then after that, we still did our original build where we use uh, inert uh, polyethylene foam where we build out like the arms and the legs to fit those to cavities. give them body exactly and, right. and cover those with a. Um, uh, not an archival textile that we found. Right. Um, wow. So all of that included. The harder part was that we wanted to ventilate through the suit for the first time. Oh, we as wanted to part move of... air through to get these oh. gases out. So this structure in the middle, this mount that you see, which is attached to the base of our case. Those two black lines. Right. Had, hooks up two fittings under there. Uh, we have ventilation air coming up through that that hooks into the skeleton, and then we made little holes throughout our entire mannequin system and used only materials that could breathe. Wow. Um, and so we have air sort of pushing out into the suit and into the cavities to sort of increase that ventilation piece. That's, in, has, an, has anything like that been done before never, with such never a- Never, in museums amazing. like that we know of or anything. So this is sort of our new, <laughs> new system. Um, it's an air exchange about every three days. It's not as much as the actual case. Right. But once the case air empties, we have a scrubber inside our mechanical closet mm -hmm. um, that catches all these gases and cleans the air and puts it back into the case. Um, the gloves and helmet, we also stopped displaying on spacesuits a long time ago because we know that they set up that micro seal still. And so we were continuing to trap the gases. Oh, right. So we've okay. invented... Um, another 3D part that we connected everything with uh, to the mannequin. So it looks like they're attached, but they're not attached using their original. But there's an air gap fitting. so right. that air, so can, the air move. can move. Oh, wow. So you spent years with this at your yeah. desk many times. There must have been countless moments where you're like, I can't believe I'm working on this. Yeah, I, I get emotional at times, you know, a little <laughs> bit like, especially when people come into the lab that haven't seen it. I mean, I did get used to sort of seeing a lot right, right. and then I put it away and bring it back out. And um, I'm, I was really super excited for the, um, the public's initial reaction to this and, um, and hearing their feedback on all of our work, but. It, it's been stunning. It's been hours, two hour lines for the last couple yeah, of days. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very humbling working on this project. I mean, it's like, you know, it's such an important piece of history. Yeah. Um, you know, anything you try, you had to try on other pieces of Apollo spacesuits that we acquired through right. research purposes and things. And you, you know, you don't want to do it for the first time on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, what kind of things did you learn on this that you didn't expect? Um, so some of the interesting things um, are these tiny little, well, you can see them on the gloves there, mm -hmm. on the gauntlet, those little gray spots. Those are actually repairs that ILC did to the glove pre-flight. Oh, Because wow. lunar dust is now trapped under the coating that they put on, which is a Teflon coating, um, which mirrored with the actual fabric. Right. But they had gotten these sort of abrasions in the fabric before they left, and they decided not to re-sew everything. It wasn't impacting the suit at all right. or the function. So You were um, telling me about the flag on the so shoulder. So the flag on the shoulder has these little spots along the red. Yeah. Um, and we had assumed maybe there was a little bit too much uh, rubbing of the shoulders in the command module, you know, get a little abrasion on the material. Sure. Um, but after seeing the original footage they've just put out on Apollo, um, all the flags look like this from the really? first mission. So we think there was a printing problem with the actual... Uh, silk screening. Oh, that's so um, funny. It, so you know, sometimes you find things you lost. don't need right. to conserve. Right? But those are the things like we would not go in and in paint or fill in. Or, sure. I mean, it tells a story. It wasn't damaged during the mission, but you just don't know. Right. So my reluctance is to do the least amount possible to the spacesuit because 20 years from now, people coming behind me or or not, I just I don't want people changing right. what you see in that and all these little stories about it. Now you talked about trying to research things and finding that the manuals and the notes from the engineers often didn't necessarily match reality. So did you keep a detailed set of notes during this we process so for future? I have maps of like all the stitching. I have oh um, maps gosh. of UV photography we did. Um, we did all sorts of different lighting photography. Um, 
across the surfaces so you can see all the different coatings and the, oh, wow. the stitches and the materials and I mean as you probably know like um, the stitching was really incredible because they had to use beta cloth threads because you couldn't use threads that were going to be at a melting point lower than the actual material right, itself. Right, so right. one of the ladies that worked on the suit told me about this great story where they used the black lights and the engineers would come through and the managers to check their that they didn't cheat and use these other threads. So I took the black light <laughs> to the suit and I could see all this stuff popping out and um, doing from repairs that. and right. other, wow. So it was really incredible. We have those images. We have the x-rays now fully. Right. Um, it took us 60 plates to do the suit, and then we stitched them together in another program, and so we have the complete x-ray. Well, and I love about the x-rays is they make it clear how much engineering you can't see. Right. That is and making And all the restraints this. and yeah. cables and yeah. fittings and everything that's sandwiched in that whole outer system. Lisa. It is an incredible achievement, and I, my hat is off to you, and I really thank you thank for you. talking to me thank about you. what you did. Thank oh you. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh.